How many of you are glad to be in the presence of the Lord today? Amen. The Bible says, in His presence, there is what? That's right. There is the fullness of joy, and His pleasure is forevermore. Amen? Amen. Then that's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, in the good times and in the bad times, I will bless him. When I when I got money, when I don't have any money, I'm going to bless him. It's not based on my feeling, it's based on my faith. I will bless. I like this crowd. They're gonna, you're gonna talk to me today, huh? Mm. Amen, amen. I'm going to get into the Word. I, I just want to, because I want to minister a little bit to some people. You know, brother, um, I saw you just like Jehoshaphat in 2 Kings chapter 3, digging dishes in the valley. And the Lord says, keep digging those ditches. The more you labor, the more God is going to put his hand and rest upon it. It might be a valley season. You might feel like you're in the valley, but God says, keep digging those ditches. Because if, as you dig those ditches, God says, you're not going to see wind, nor are you going to see rain. God says, I don't need to give you a sign. You just need to know my time. And the Lord wants you to know that he's not going to give you a sign, but he's going to fill every ditch that you dig in your life. Not only in the ministry, but in your life as well. The Lord wants you to know as much as you prepare, God is going to provide in your life. Whatever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. And God is going to make sure it's absolutely filled. There's going to be none lacking in your life. In Jesus' name. Brother, the power that you have been praying for is going to be released. When I looked at you, I saw open heavens above you. And it's like God is saying he's going to give you strategy for evangelism. He's going to even stretch your territory in that area. And God wants you to know that you're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles, even healings in the area of evangelism. And God says where you, your net has broken in the past, don't worry about broken nets. God is mending your net right now. And he is stretching your territory. He's stretching your net so that you can go forward even in a greater way, says the Lord. And you're going to be able to experience the fullness of his spirit. His spirit is going to come upon you and it's going to minister through you to the people and it's going to be in such precise accuracy when you're looking at somebody you're going to see even like Jesus because God wants you to know that he's put a word of knowledge into your life in Jesus name yeah. if you have your Bibles with you today I want to go to a certain passage we, we all know it pretty familiar. I'm going to be reading different parts of the passage because I want to capture certain points that I believe you need in your life today. And I'm going to try to make it reality to you. John chapter number 11. We're going to read verses 1 through 6, 17 through 22, and then we'll jump over and catch um, verse, verses a little bit later. Now, certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet. Stop right there. Have you ever been doing everything right and all of a sudden everything goes wrong? 
I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm doing everything right in life, and I'm walking right, and I'm talking right, and I'm praying right, but all of a sudden, everything goes wrong for some reason. You're not going to talk to me today? You know what? They, they said, this is that Mary which anointed the Lord. With, she was doing everything right, but she had a problem in her house. Okay, let's keep reading. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard, heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Amen. That the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Oh my goodness, did you hear that? Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. The Bible clearly expresses his love for them, but in his love he delays. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and tell him, God loved me enough to be late. <laughs> That's right, God loved me enough to be late in my life. I know he's not always on time. I know he might not come when I want him to come, but he will come when I need him the most in my life. When I'm at the crossroads of my life, then it shows Jesus. It might be a little bit delayed, but it's not going to be denied in your life. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh into Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been... My brother would not have died. Oh, that's, yes, faith in the past. Lord, if you had been here yesterday, this wouldn't be happening to me today. If you would have answered my prayer yesterday, I wouldn't be in the mess that I'm in today. God, if you would have heard me call out your name, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. But look at the next verse. He says, she says, then, but I know that even... Even now I know that whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. I want to jump over to verse 38 and read from verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Mary, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks. For he has been dead four days. You ever had something stink in your life? Mm. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldst see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from that place where the dead was laying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they might believe that thou hast sent me. Look at the God you serve. He says, I thank you that you have heard me already, God. I thank you, Father, that you have heard my prayer. I know that you always hear me. I'm not praying this for my sake, but I'm praying I can think Lazarus right out of the grave. Look how big your God is. He can think your situation right out of the grave. He can resurrect some things just by thinking. He doesn't even have to lay hands on it. He doesn't even have to pray for it. He can already always just think it and it'll come pop right up out of the grave. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. I want to talk to you today about resurrected faith. Is there anybody in here and you're going through a death situation? 
You might have a grave in your life, a grave in your economy, a grave in your health, something dead in one area or another in your life. I don't know what it might be. It might be in your family. It might be in your relationships. But if the truth be told, we all probably have a grave somewhere in our life. Somewhere where we have put something behind the tomb and put it away. But today, God wants to resurrect hope. Today, God wants to resurrect faith. Today, God wants to move in your midst. God wants to do something today. And let's pray just for the word for a moment. Father, we thank you that you have spoken your word, God. Father, we pray that your spirit would just anoint this place, Lord God. Let the oil of gladness flow in here, Lord Jesus. Let the oil come upon us, Lord God. Let it make our hearts rejoice, Lord God. We have come hungry and we have come thirsty for you. We haven't come to meet with man, but we've come to meet with Almighty God. And I pray today, Father, that you would meet your people right where they are at. Wonderful Jesus, don't you always meet us where we're at? When we don't can't we when we can't get to where you are, you come to where we are. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. And everyone who loves the Lord, shout amen. all agree on today is that life is a battle. I don't know about you, but I'm constantly battling. I'm constantly in a fight. And that's something I believe that we can agree. You know, it's a miracle to get Christians to agree nowadays. <laughs> they don't want to agree with you on anything because you know, the Bible says if two of you shall agree on, you don't need 20,000 people. You don't need a million people. You just need two people like Paul and Silas to agree together. And God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And, and we can agree that life is a battle. A journey in life. And you must understand something today that when the devil attacks you, there's one thing he wants. When he attacks your house, it's not that he's going to be sitting there drinking coffee in the morning greeting you with good morning. It's because he wants to steal your faith. When he attacks your marriage or your relationships, it's not because he's going to be holding hands with your wife the next day, walking down the side of the road. I know you might think it's the devil, but he's not going to be holding the hands, walking with, the, with your wife the next day. He's attacking your marriage because he wants your faith. Because he knows that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that. I believe that he is. He's not the great I was. He is the great I am. The one who was and is and is to come. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. That's why when God starts something in your life, God is going to finish it in your life. my life, I know God's going to finish it in my life. Amen. Because he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the ending. He is the first and he is the last. He is the author and he is the finisher of my faith. And I might, if God starts something in my life, I might go through hell all the way through, but the Bible says, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is going to perform his work in your life today. God is going to get you through because you didn't bring yourself here. And when you didn't bring yourself here, you ought to remind the devil, I didn't bring myself here. God brought me here and because God brought me here. He's going to finish his work in my life. So, uh, I'll do this for people with notes. I gave you five points to resurrected faith. Number one, relationship. Two, 
operate in faith or any supernatural gift, there's got to be a measure of faith in your life. And there has to be a development of relationship to operate. It's too many Christians today I've seen around the church and around the world are uh, trying to operate in faith, but they don't have relationship. You ever confess the scripture and you didn't see it come to pass and the devil just punches you again? No weapon formed against you. Bam. And you got a black eye on one side and there you are confessing the scripture. No weapon formed against and he hits you on the other side. Hallelujah. See, before they had a problem, you must catch this. Before they had a problem, they had a relationship. That's the unique thing about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house. That's why Jesus stopped by there all the time passing through Bethany. Why? Because Martha opened up her house unto, unto Jesus and all those 12 jokers that were with him. That was a big work, you know. They would have to wash clothes, cook meals, do dishes, all that other stuff like that. And when he walked into town, it wasn't so easy. Sometimes when Jesus comes into our life, it's not so easy in our life. But I know my God will complete that which I have committed unto him. That's why I have a problem with preachers telling people, if you get right with Jesus, everything's going to be okay. Really? When I got right with Jesus, all hell started breaking loose in my life. But I didn't stop there. I knew that he would never leave me and never forsake me. I knew that he was with me always, even until the end. And if I had a problem in my life, I had a relationship with him before I had the problem. Amen. Too many people allow their problems to bring them to church. You don't see people in church unless they have problems. When they have problems, then they make it to the house of God. Many times, for much of the majority of the church, they have problems. But don't allow your problem to drive you to Christ. I was like the psalmist, and I prayed when I got saved, Lord, I will worship you in my prosperity. I will have a relationship with you in my prosperity. That's why you won't have to put me into a problem, because I'm going to praise you in my prosperity. I will be in your house, even in my prosperity. Even when everything is going right, I will be in your house house so that you don't have to turn anything wrong in my life. That tells me another thing. I never begin a relationship with somebody on the basis of need. If somebody comes to me and then if they want something from me, then I step back a little bit. Because when I develop relationship with somebody, I want to develop it on the basis of what can I give to you? Ooh, there's a little bit different road right there. What can I give to you? I want to be in your life to see how I can help you develop, how I can help nurture you, how I can help grow you. What do I have in my life that can bless you? That's when you start a relationship with somebody. When somebody comes up to you and says, hey, I got these things. I want to use them for the, to lift you up. I want to use them to push you forward. I want to use them so that you can be blessed with whatever I have. That's where relationship is good. That's why when you come to the church, you don't come to see what you can get from Jesus. Oh my goodness. You come to see what you can give to Jesus. When you approach him, never approach him without empty with empty hands. You need to approach him with something in your life and say, Lord, I have come to give you this in my life. I have come to give you praise. I have come to give you worship. I have come to give you glory. I have come to give you honor in your house, God. I'm not coming empty handed to receive something. I'm coming to you to give you something, Jesus. Here's my life, Lord. Take it and let it be. So Jesus 
But Mary, Martha, and Lazarus had a relationship with Jesus. That's the start of resurrected faith. If you want your faith to grow a little bit today, guess what? You need a deeper relationship with Jesus. Amen. When God takes me through something greater, I understand he's calling me closer. But just because you have a relationship with Jesus doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. Because they had a big problem, isn't it? Their brother was sick. And there's Lazarus over there and he's... <laughs> Trying to gasp for air. There's Lazarus. And he is absolute. <laughs> and his eyes are rolling like this. And Mary and Martha said, you know what? Our brother's sick. There's a problem we have in our house. Let's pray to Jesus. Let's send word to Jesus. And you know what you have to do? Not only do you have to have a relationship with him, you have to recognize Recognize what? That my problem is not really a problem. It is really an opportunity. Um. It's not really a problem in my life. It is an opportunity. An opportunity for what? For Jesus' strength to be made perfect in my weakness. Didn't Paul say that? When I am weak, then am I strong. Let me tell you something. When you are at your worst, God is at his best. He's ready to show up right where you're at. Right in the middle of your weakness. Right in the middle of your trial. God is ready to show up right in the middle of your dysfunction, right in the middle of your incompletion. God is ready to show up and complete everything in your life that has broken down. I recognize that I say that's not a problem. That's an opportunity for my destiny. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to what? Be conformed to the image of Christ. My destiny is not my achievements. My destiny is not my accolades. My destiny is when you can look at me and say, I see Jesus Christ in his life. That's what your destiny is. When people look right at you and they say, he's conformed to the image of Christ. I see so much Jesus in him. I want what he has. Don't you want people to do that? That's how you get the lost saved. When people see the Jesus in you. When you're living and loving your faith. Amen. And I have to recognize that it's not really... A problem. It's not really a difficulty. See, when we see it as a problem, psychologically it affects our mind. And then it will affect our faith. But if I see it as an opportunity, it's going to affect my mind in a positive way and it's going to release my faith in a great way. When I see it in a different light, when I change perspectives, You know, in John chapter 4, Jesus told his disciples, you know what, all you have to do is change perspective in life. He says, say not that there are four months and then comes the harvest. Lift up your eyes for the harvest is white already. Amen. Amen. He said, don't put off my power until tomorrow. You can live in my power today if you will just see things in a different way. If you will just look at things in a different way. You don't have to wait until something happens. You can see it happen right now in your life. And there they are, and they said, let's, send, let's, let's, let's pray together. Let's get the intercessors together. Mary, Mary and Martha got together, and they started interceding for Lazarus. And there's Lazarus. They're praying, and he's dying. 
That's a wonderful anointing to have, isn't it? <laughs> You're praying and the person's getting worse. <laughs> you know, there he is. Again, he's... <laughs> They're sitting there praying for days and uh, there he goes and he's done. Go see if Jesus. I can't see him. Did you check the back door? Maybe he came up the back side. I can't believe this, Jesus. I washed his clothes. Cooked him dinner. And when I need him the most, all hell breaks loose in my life. <laughs> Jesus, where are you? Right, some, of you some of you know what I'm talking about up here. <laughs> Lord, where are you when all hell is breaking loose? You know, sometimes things will die while you're waiting on God. I don't know about you, but have you ever had something die while you're waiting on God? Have your dreams die while you're waiting on God? Have your vision die while you're waiting on God? Have your relationship die while you're waiting on God? Have your family break, load, break down while you're waiting on God? Let me tell you something. There is a place you can go while you're waiting on... There's, my, there, there's your dream and it's gone. I'm out. And I can't believe this Jesus. He didn't come and see me in my deepest, darkest moment. I can understand if he was out feeding 5,000 people. What's he doing? Just sitting there. I can understand, I can understand if he was healing people. What was he doing? Just waiting. Just waiting for the divine time. Oh, come on now. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. Let me tell you something. In his time, he will perfect you. In his time, he will work the miracle. In his time, he will use you. In his time, he will make all things beautiful in his time. Brother, I see victory written all over you. There is victory that is coming. I see Jesus just stamped victory over your life. And he says, you can dance all you want. You can shout all you want. Because victory is your lot and your portion. You're not going to be torn down by everything else going on around you. God says, having done all else there, just stand there for. And I'm going to give you victory in every area. It's, it's going to break out. You're just going to look to the left in victory. You're going to look to the right and victory is coming. God says victory is your cup and your inheritance today. You will decree and you will declare victory in Jesus' name. See, if something dies while you're waiting on God, what do you do next? Let's take Lazarus. You can't leave dead Lazarus sitting on your couch. He starts to stink and your neighbors won't come over. You want to get rid of some family that has overstayed that? <laughs> that have overstayed themselves a little bit? Guess what? Just let something die and let it sit there. They will get out of there, believe me, in a moment. Because you can't leave something dead in your life. You have to do something with it. Faith without works is dead. What? Dead. That's right. You can't leave dead Lazarus to say, Lord, you have to do something. And what did Mary and Martha do? They did number three. They took him and released him. Ooh, did you understand that? You have to release your problem. 
Because as long as you have your hands on it, God will not touch it. Once you, once you take your hands off, God puts his hands right on it. That's important for faith. I need to understand what I need to release in my life. Because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken and shall he not make it good? If God said something, God is going to do it in your life. You can take that to the bank. That's more secure than any insurance company. That's more secure than any job security. The Lord's word is will not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which he sent it forth to accomplish. And if you have a word from God, you don't have to keep your hands on whatever it is that is dying. You can just release it. Because as I, I learned that as long as you're... That's why I counsel people when they come to me and tell me, my son's all messed up. He's running all around. He's doing drugs, this and I said, take your hands off him. As long as you have your hands on, God won't put his hands on him. Take your hands off. Once you take your hands off, God puts his hands on. Amen. And God knows exactly what to do to put you in the right situation. He knows what is the atmosphere you will grow in. He knows exactly what to do and how to get everything good and perfect out of your life. He will pour upon you a blessing that you do not have room enough to receive. If you will just take your hands off, God will put his hands on it. I believe that's what provoked Jesus to move when he moved. Once they released Lazarus into the grave, the funeral's over. Praise and worship stops. The grievers stop and they start going home. And while they're walking in the other direction, while they're going home, here comes Jesus. When you didn't think it could work out, then he comes. When you thought it was almost done, then he comes. When you have released everything in your life to him, then he comes. He might not come when you call him to come, but he will come in his time. And he will come to make all things beautiful in your life. Right? Oh, if you believe that, just give God about 10 seconds of praise. silence and soft spoken you haven't been in enough trouble yet 
When you get in enough trouble, you'll start praising God anywhere. You'll bow down in the, in, the, in the restroom praising God. You'll praise God right in front of your co-workers. You'll praise God in the middle of your, your accommodation. You'll just lift up your hands and start praising God. People will look at you like you're crazy, but you can tell them my miracle's on the way. My breakthrough's on the way. My going home. I love Jesus. Amen. He just does things so unnormal like. Let him put your his super on your natural and watch things work out. He is so awesome. Look at Jesus. He comes when everybody else has given up. Then he comes. He said, I waited for this moment in your life. And here comes Martha, and she says, Oh, why is your daddy here, my brother? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I've cried sometimes myself to sleep at night. I've cried myself to wake up in the morning. I've cried myself to work at times. And God looks at you and he, he says, wait a minute here, what are, you, what are you all broken down and sorrowful for? All you need to do, then she recognizes, she realizes that after the release, number four, she has a revelation. <laughs> Jesus says, then she says, but I know that even... No. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about yesterday. It's about today. God can work the miracle today in your life. He's not going to wait until a week or a month. God can do it today if you have some now faith. Amen. Oh, if we would have kept reading, she said, Jesus says, your brother shall rise again in the last day. She says, I am. He says, Jesus says, your brother shall rise again. She says, I know that he will rise again in the last day. Yep. There's faith in the past. There's faith in the future. Jesus said, I wasn't now faith. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Jesus says, stop having faith in the past. Stop having faith in the future and get some now faith because now faith substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I might not be able to see it right now, but I can feel it in my spirit. It might not manifest right now, but I can feel it in my bones. It might not manifest right now, but I know it's coming because I got some now faith. I got some faith for the present period in my life right now. Amen. That's the revelation you need to capture is that you don't have to leave your faith in the past. You don't have to put your faith in tomorrow. You can have enough faith right now in your life. Let me tell you something. Things can change right now. Things can transform right now. Things can happen right now that have never happened to you before. You want to see a miracle working God? Give him some resurrected faith in your life. You know what? The sign of faith you have prayed out, I understand. You have cried out, I understand. But now you need to praise out a little bit and just say, thank you, Lord. I thank you that you have heard me already. This is my prayer, Lord God. I know you have done it already. But because of everybody else standing around me, you have reserved it for this time. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, somebody... I was preaching better than you were shouting. Did you capture that? Something can happen. Right now. All you have to do is say, Lord, I thank you. You have heard me. 
already. Look at the look at the faith in her life and his in Jesus' life. That's the kind of faith we need in our life. Because then when Jesus starts walking, he you know what he said? He said, I'm gonna work the miracle. Don't worry about that. He said, I'll work the miracle. No problem. But there's one thing you need to do. You need to take me to the place you have laid him. Take me to the place where you have stopped believing. Take me to the place you have given up in life. Take me to the place. See, we dance in the presence of God. We shout in the presence of God. We sing in the presence of God. But what we need to do is learn how to take the presence of God to the places where we have stopped believing in our lives. Because when we do that, we're on our we're setting ourselves up for a miracle. You can be honest with God and say, God, I've given up in that area, but I'm taking your presence. Because as long as your presence is there, nothing can stay dead in his presence. Yeah. Nothing can stay dead in his presence. Oh, if I was preaching on John and Jesus in the mother's womb, if you do a little bit of extra study, you find out that for the first six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, she didn't feel any movement in her womb. In other words, she was carrying around something she thought was dead. And then here comes Mary with resurrection and life in her. She knocks on Elizabeth's door, and as Elizabeth opened, the baby leaked in Elizabeth's womb. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because she was touching resurrection and life. Anything Jesus touches, anything Jesus touches, anything, it doesn't matter how dead it is, if Jesus touches it, it will come back to life. I'll throw this one in there. Just, just, just out there. <sighs> 30 years later, John would look up and see the same Jesus he had sensed before. Remember when John was baptizing in the Jordan? He looks up and sees what he has only sensed. That tells me if I sense it first, I'm going to see it next. Amen. <laughs> If I sense it first, have you ever sensed deliverance, but you haven't seen it? Have you ever sensed healing, but you haven't seen it? Have you ever sensed prosperity, but you haven't seen it? Have you ever sensed a promotion, but you haven't seen it? If you sense it first, let me tell you, you're going to see it next. Yeah. And then they are standing in water again. 30 years earlier, they were in water in their mother's wombs. There they are in the Jordan again, and water is. Jesus comes. She gets a revelation. And Jesus says, Now take my presence to the place you have stopped believing. She says, Okay, Jesus, come on, let's go. And this is the revelation still. As she's walking with Jesus, here comes Mary. Nah, my brother, if you had been here, shut up. <laughs> If you read the whole chapter, Mary comes out, Lord, my brother, shut up. It's my insertion right there. <laughs> but he was taking her, and she said, Lord, if you are good, you're good. Let me go. And then he turned to Martha and said, Now roll away the stone. I'm going to work. Martha says, Lord, he's been dead four days and he stinks. She said, he said, didn't I tell you that if you would believe today, if you would believe today, if you would believe today, you would see the glory of God in your life. It's not a problem to tear you down. It's a problem to lift 
you up. God says if you believe today, you will see the glory of God. Stop wondering why it happened. Stop wondering how it happened. Just like Jesus' disciples when he healed the blind man, the man that was born blind, they said, Jesus, why is he suffering the way he's suffering? Why is he going through what he is going through? And you know what Jesus said? Neither did his parents do anything, did he do do anything. In other words, stop worrying about why it happened. I have done this that he might say that the works of God could be revealed in his life. Let me tell you something. What you're going through right now, you're going through so that the works of God can be revealed in your life. It's nothing that you did. It's nothing your family did. Because if you would believe today, you would see the glory of God in your life. So we come to the last point. After we have relationship, after we have recognition, after we have release, revelation, we have resurrection. Jesus said, now roll away the stone. Jesus just lifts up his hand. He sends forth his word and heals his disease. He doesn't need to go lay hands on him. He doesn't even need to spit on him. I'm glad Jesus didn't spit on everybody he healed. We'd have a lot of spit flying in the church today. What did Jesus do? He sent his word right into that graveyard, right into that tomb, and all of a sudden the, the spirit woke up, came back to Lazarus. He says, I know that's not the voice of man. That can't be the voice of man. That has to be the voice of Jesus Christ, because I hear resurrection and life calling me. And as long as resurrection and life are calling me, I'm coming out of every grave in my life. I'm coming out of every low place in my life. I'm coming out of every valley in my life. I'm coming out. Jesus said, hey, Lazarus. Oh, I hope somebody, I hope that word hit somebody's Lazarus today. Jesus said, hey, Lazarus. He said, hey, economy come forth. Health come forth. Family come forth. Business come forth. Ministry come forth. Something is going to come forth in your life today. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you, the hour is come and now is where the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. Can you hear him speaking to you today? Can you hear him calling your Lazarus today? Can you hear him speaking to the dead places in your life? Guess what? It's going to come forth in your life. I'm so glad he said Lazarus. If he didn't say Lazarus, Abraham would have came up. <laughs> Isaac would have come up. Jacob would have, you would have had all three of those people together. David would have popped up. All these people would have started. You know what that tells me? What God has for me, He has for me. Amen. Nobody else can steal what God has for me in my life. Amen. And He said, Lazarus, come out. Here comes Lazarus. He can't even see where He's going. He said, I, I might not be able to see where I'm going, but I know what I'm looking for. A city with half foundations. 
whose maker and builder is God. I might not be able to see exactly where I'm going right now. I might not understand this part of the journey in my life, but I know when I get there, I'm going to be right in God's will. I'm going to be sitting right there at the table with him, that when everybody around is looking for a sign, all Jesus has to do is point to me, because he has worked a miracle in my life. He has brought a resurrection in my life. He has raised something up in my life. I wonder if you have something dead today that you need God to resurrect. Is your passion for Christ dying? Is your prayer life withering away? Is your worship dying because of your situation? The Lord sent me here today to tell you, don't give up on your dream. Because he has some resurrected faith for you. It doesn't matter how dead it is. When the presence of Jesus comes to the tomb, he always does something. Lord, she's waiting for something on you for. And the Lord wants you to know that your waiting is not in vain. There might not be any outward appearance, any material manifestation of it, but God wants you to know today that he has seen your prayer and he has heard your cry. And as he has seen your prayer and heard your cry, he is going to raise some things up in your life. Some expectation is going to come up in your life. Some new faith is going to come up in your life. Every dead situation that you have walked through, I see the fragrance of God following you. The Lord wants you to know that doesn't, you don't have to wonder how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. Just know it's going to happen. And walk in that revelation. Lord, I thank you for this life in the name of Jesus. I see your glory all over her right now, Lord God. You're ministering to some dead areas in her heart. And in her spirit, Lord God, there is going to be a resurrection in her life, in Jesus' name. There's a new season. God says a new season in your life. Unlike has, has ever been there before. God says your better days are not your yesterdays. Your better days are before you. The Lord wants you to know that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. And everything that the enemy has stolen in your life, God is going to make him repay. Because when the thief is caught, he has to repay seven times. God says there's a sevenfold blessing that is coming your way. Unlike you have seen before. God, I see him in the fire, Lord God. It's like there's flames all around him. And he's going through that time in the flame. But the Lord wants you to know that he's right there with you, right standing right in the flames, right in the furnace with you. And God says when he brings you out, 
Nothing else is going to smell on you. Nothing else is going to be burnt on you. Things are not going to be eaten on you. There's going to be a testimony that you're coming out with. There's going to be a brand new witness for God that you are coming out with. God says, I am even strengthening you today. I am building the strengths. I am, I am, I am taking you through the fire. It's a, like a refining process where God can bring forth pure gold in your life. God right. says the gold is coming. Get ready because my pure gold, my pure silver is coming into your life. Know that you have been through the process and because you have been through the process, you're going to complete and inherit the promise. The Lord says even you'll step into a greater promise, you'll see a greater day in your life. You're not always going to see the flames. You're going to see the declaration of his testimony go forth saying worship this, uh, this person's God right here. In Jesus' name. Amen. I see God constructing something, just putting, like construction, just putting things in the right place right now. God says even when you look on it on the outward, it might seem like it's all out of order. But God says on the inside, I'm lining things up. I'm changing even the root system, says the Lord. I'm changing the things underground you. Even where you cannot see, God is working the most. And God says, where I am working, if I change the root, I can completely change the fruit. Okay, that's good. God is going to change the root so that you can produce the fruit. And it's just not going to be temporary. God is going to establish his work. Amen. I see God saying, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. There's no more fear that's going to hit you. God says, I'm going to fill you with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to take this moment here. If you have something dead in your life and you need God to raise it up, I would like you to stand up with me right now. Is there anybody in here? Nobody has anything dead. There you go. Anybody else? Some dead emotions. Some dead faith. Something has died relationships, economics, passion, prayer. Something's dying and you need God to resurrect it. right now. I pray that every dead area in their life would hear the voice of life, the voice of resurrection and life, saying, Lazarus, come forth. They are going to arise and come forth in destiny. Come forth in purpose. Come forth with a new hope. Come forth in a new day. Lord, I see people coming forth right now. I see things popping up in your life. God says it's not going to stay dead, but it shall be resurrected in your life. If you can believe, God says, you will see the glory of God in your, if you would believe, if you would somehow faith and you will see the glory of God in your life. God 